Hello, this presentation is the third of four presentations which provide an introduction to assistive technology for computer access. Part one was an overview of assistive technology. Part two covered assistive technology for monitors. This part provides an overview of the assistive technology keyboards that are available. Part four will cover the various types of assistive technology mice. Please note that this presentation will advance by itself and all you need to do is observe and listen. I will read and explain all information as we go along. The topics covered in this presentation are why are keyboards such a problem? What types of assistive technology keyboards are available? The features of these AT keyboards? And some of the software solutions for keyboarding problems. Even if you do not have any problems using a keyboard at this time, please be aware that many people have sustained injuries to their hands and wrists from overuse of a computer keyboard. Hopefully, you will never experience a repetitive strain injury from typing, but it may be helpful for you to be aware of the options available in case you are ever faced with even temporary issues with your hands or wrists. The first topic we are going to cover is why keyboards are such a problem. In this next picture, we show you the positioning of your hands and wrists for keyboarding. As you can see, the hands are lifted and the wrists are twisted to the side. We need to be aware of the fact that the layout and design of the keyboard is based on the old typewriter. The layout for the typewriter was designed in 1860. The keys were organized in order to slow a typist down and minimize key jams. At the time, body positioning and ergonomic principles were not considered. Unfortunately, although alternative layouts and designs have been proposed, the computer manufacturing industry has stuck with the layout taught to most touch typists. Our keyboarding problems arise from the resulting position that is required to operate a keyboard. First, you must be able to bend your elbow. Then, you must be able to turn your forearm so that your palm is facing down. Next, you must be able to pull up on your wrist. And finally, you must be able to bend your wrist to the little finger side. This position may be difficult or impossible for a person with a disability. Even if you can do all of these movements, problems may arise when you do them for hours at a time. The body was not designed to sustain this kind of activity for a prolonged period. Unfortunately, we get so involved in using the computer that we lose our awareness of our body position. If I asked you to sit in a position that you use for typing and to hold that position for the next eight hours while you watch TV, you would tire very quickly. This is what we do every day in an office environment. Let's also remember that AT keyboards are only an option, and many problems can be averted by adopting good posture habits, positioning the keyboard according to ergonomic principles, taking regular breaks, and stretching on a regular basis. Now, let's look at what types of assistive technology keyboards are available. I have organized the various types of assistive technology keyboards into the following categories. Fixed split keyboards, adjustable split keyboards, contoured keyboards, miniature keyboards, vertical keyboards, combination keyboards, cording keyboards, and finally, assistive technology software. Now let's cover some of the main features of these AT keyboard categories. Fixed split keyboards are the most common assistive technology keyboards on the market today. They are available at your local office retail stores, such as Staples and Office Depot. They are commonly referred to as either ergonomic or wave keyboards. These keyboards are designed to improve the alignment of your wrist. A fixed split keyboard splits the keys into three sections. The main keyboard sections are angled towards your right and left hands and sloped upward in the middle. This sloping is called tenting. The numeric keyboard remains flat on the right side of the keyboard. Next category is the adjustable split keyboards. These keyboards are similar to the fixed split keyboards, however, they allow for the adjustment of both the angle 
to align your wrists and the tenting height. With an adjustable split keyboard, you can adjust the positioning of the left and right sections of the keyboard and set the slope of the keyboard. One of the advantages of this type of keyboard is that it can be customized for an individual and it enables the changing of this position over the course of the day. This can be beneficial for people with certain disabilities. For example, we have found that the adjustability of this keyboard can provide comfort and pain relief to people with arthritis. Next, we will look at contoured keyboards. With contoured keyboards, the keys follow curves to closely match the natural position and movement of the fingers. This reduces the amount of finger travel to the keys. Several of the keys are also relocated from the little finger to be operated by the thumb, a stronger digit. Many people with repetitive strain injuries find this type of keyboard comfortable. The next category of keyboards are the miniature keyboards. These keyboards are much smaller than the standard size keyboard and are recommended for one-handed typists. Using a smaller keyboard will reduce the travel distance required to type keys with one hand. The keyboard should be positioned to either the right or left hand side to reduce arm movement. Since the layout of the keys is similar to a standard keyboard, this option does not require extensive training. Here we have one of the more unusual looking keyboards. This is called a vertical keyboard. With the vertical keyboard, the standard keyboard's right and left sections are placed in an upright position. This position is considered the neutral position for the forearms and hands. If you drop your hands to your side and then lift them straight up, you'll find that you are in the proper position for using this keyboard. For anybody who has difficulty twisting their arms so that their palm is facing downward, this keyboard may be a good alternative. However, holding your hands in this vertical position can be tiring. Combination keyboards are keyboards that have both keys for typing and a device for mouse control. These keyboards are available in both standard and miniature sizes. The pointing device can be either a touchpad or a trackball. Learning to use this keyboard usually does not require specialized training. This keyboard is sometimes preferred by someone who experiences spasms or tremors. The advantage of this keyboard is that when the mouse control is integrated into the keyboard, an inadvertent spasm won't send the mouse flying across the room. Another specialized type of keyboard is the cording keyboard. This category of keyboards describes keyboards where two actions are required in order to type most of the letters. The keyboard shown in the picture is called the BAT or BAT and is typically used by one-handed typists. Each of the cording keyboards requires very different cording techniques and training is required. Typing on the BAT keyboard is similar to playing a musical chord on a piano. There are only seven keys on this device. However, using cording techniques, you can type all of the keystrokes on a standard keyboard. An advantage of this keyboard is that finger travel is minimized. Another cording keyboard designed for one-handed typing is the half QWERTY keyboard. This key looks like a standard keyboard except for the fact that every key has two letters on it. The keys are mirrored on each half of the keyboard. For example, the letters F and J are on the same key. To type the mirrored key, you need to hold down the spacebar while you type. This keyboard is recommended for one-handed typists because it reduces the finger and hand movement required to type. We have found that it can be an effective option for someone who had previously been a two-handed touch typist. Surprisingly, for a trained touch typist, learning to use this keyboard is usually very quick as the brain will automatically map all of the keystrokes from a specific finger on one hand to the same finger on the other hand. Another example of a cording keyboard is the OrbiTouch keyboard. This keyboard is very unusual because it does not have any standard keys on it. To type on this type of keyboard, you slide the disks in one of the eight directions. It is necessary to coordinate the color selection on the right disk with the letter selection on the left disk to type a letter. And it also provides mouse control. 
There are also some other keyboards which did not fit into the previous categories. The first one is the left-handed keyboard. This is similar to a standard keyboard, however, the numeric keypad is now on the left side. There's the big keys keyboard. Each one of the keys on this keyboard is one inch square. This keyboard might be recommended for someone who has a vision impairment or someone who has a physical impairment which makes it difficult for them to press the smaller keys on a standard keyboard. There's also the keyboard with a key guard. This is a standard keyboard which has a cover over it. There are holes in the cover which are aligned with each one of the keys. This allows you to press your finger down through the hole to type the key. That covers the general categories for assistive technology keyboards. Next we'll look at some of the software solution for keyboarding problems. Let's start with the options that are available as part of the Windows operating system. These are called the accessibility properties. The first option is a very useful one and it is called sticky keys. When this option is turned on, it enables you to type a capital letter through two separate keystrokes instead of having to hold down the shift key while you are pressing the letter key. This option works with the control and alt keys as well. Once the feature is turned on, you can type a capital letter by pressing the shift key and releasing it and then pressing the letter key. The computer will then type a capital letter for you and automatically switch back to the lower case letters. This option was initially designed for people who type with one hand. However, it is useful with many other people as it reduces the strain on your little finger. The next option under the Windows Accessibility Properties is called Filter Keys. This option changes the responsiveness of the keyboard. You may have noticed that when you hold down a key on the keyboard, it will be typed repeatedly on the screen. The Filter Keys option lets you adjust how quickly this repeating action will begin and how fast it will repeat. If you find that as you type, you see double letters being typed on the screen when you did not want them, this option should be selected and adjusted for you. The last option under the Windows Accessibility Properties is called Toggle Keys. This option provides an auditory warning when the Caps Lock, Num Lock, or Scroll Lock keys are pressed. If you find that occasionally you accidentally hit the caps lock key instead of the shift key, this would be a useful option to turn on. Another software option to help you type is to use a program which provides either word prediction or word completion. When then using this type of software, a list of possible words is displayed as you type. You can then select the correct word from the list by pressing the number beside it. The software will then complete the typing for you. This type of software can be beneficial for someone who types slowly or someone who has difficulty with spelling or accuracy. The next three types of assistive technology are designed for people who cannot access any type of physical keyboard. The first option is to type by Morse code. To do this, you will need to be able to control a single or double switch. The switch may be something that you tap, touch, or even blow into. By activating the switch, you can type using a series of dots and dashes called Morse code. Although this may sound like a very old-fashioned way of typing, it can be very effective and we have several clients who type at over 30 words per minute using this technique. Another option for someone who cannot use a standard keyboard is to use an on-screen keyboard. When using this type of software program, it displays an image of a keyboard on your screen. You can then use your mouse to point to the letters and click them to type. This may look like a slow way to type, however, you can combine it with the word prediction feature to increase the number of letters that are typed with a single click. In this example, we have typed the word time with two clicks of the mouse. Another way to use an on-screen keyboard is to set it up as a scanning keyboard. This type of keyboard is used with this, either a single switch or a dual switch. To begin the scanning process, you will click your switch and the first row on the on-screen keyboard will be highlighted. The highlight will automatically move down one row at a time. When the highlight reaches the row that contains the letter that you want, just click your switch again. Once you, once again, 
Once again, you will have to wait until that key that you wanted to type is highlighted before pressing your switch. Switch. And the letter is right. This method may seem very slow, however, it can enable somebody who control only one muscle in their body to control a computer. One of the most popular options for typing is to use your voice. The software program that enables you to do this is called Dragon Naturally Speaking. This program has been on the market for almost 20 years, but has only recently become good enough to be a useful tool. The program recognizes your speech phrase by phrase. Using this technique, it can make a very accurate guess at what you are saying based on not just what it hears, but also which words that it expects to see together. Although the software can be very accurate, there are some conditions to achieve that level of accuracy. You must have a calm and clear voice. Your pronunciation must be consistent. This is especially important if you have an accent. You must have a good understanding of English grammar as the program uses the structure of the English language to make its best guess about what you have said. It is helpful if you have a good working knowledge of computers prior to learning Dragon Naturally Speaking. You will need patience and determination to make this a good option for you. The workplace environment must be conducive to using voice recognition. If there is a lot of noise or a lot of interruptions in the workplace, voice recognition may not be a good option. This software also requires a lot of computer resources, so the system that you are running it on must be fairly new. This concludes our overview of assistive technology for keyboards. If you have any questions about this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact your assigned facilitator. Please continue by viewing the presentation on assistive technology for mice.